gonna head out and look at a, <clears throat> I think it's a produce cooler, he said. I'm not sure, um, at this little market town over. Let's get out there, we'll take a look. It's a beautiful sunny day. TC up here. It's 54 degrees, 37, 9 degree differential. And I just checked it. I think there's a defrost timer in here too. I'm gonna have to take a look. <clears throat> so the solenoid's energized. We gotta go on the roof and check the condensing unit. I'm working on this unit. As you can see, I'm up on the roof. That is an indoor unit sitting outside with no doghouse on it. <clears throat> and it has been raining like the dickens <laughs> and look at this right here that there that there's <laughs> some high quality work oh. mama mia okay i'm sure everything here got super wet and died will be good powered down powered back on and then that's our screen on our low pressure control it does like low pressure high pressure <clears throat> i'm pretty sure it's toast one more screw right here um because it sat out here and got rained on you can see there's water everywhere i think in the month of february it's rained almost every every day yeah you can see a bunch of water in there Look at that contactor too, it's probably crappy. We'll pull the cover off that and see what the contacts look like. But our control is dead. We got pressure. So I got static right there. It's pretty good, it's pretty cold outside, so that's pretty close probably. And this is dead. So I think what we'll do, we'll get rid of the transducer I'll run a regular pressure switch to this, and I think I got a fan cycling. I'll run one uh, condenser fan full time and one off a of fan cycling, and I think we might be able to get away with that. I think that's what we're going to do. Well, let's kill power right here. Well, we can make the sure the compressor runs real quick. I don't re recommend you guys doing this but I'm gonna do it. Yeah. One fan's full time, one comes off the pressure switch. And I think this control would make them lead lag and switch. It was, it's a great control. I don't have one, but I'm gonna make this unit work. And then I'm gonna get a doggy house for this built up. It goes, it's just the house cleaning. Start ripping that stuff out of there. And your contactor. Um. There's already a head pressure switch on this system for high head cutout. So that comes in right here. We're gonna put that in series with our low pressure switch, which is gonna go on here. Cause before it had the transducer, this transducer was talking to this control right here, low pressure. You can see it's got the Schrader connector in there and there is a Schrader connector on here, which was nice. And then the only other thing we have to add is a fan cycling switch for one of those condenser fan motors. And I got one on the truck. And unfortunately, I'm probably going to have to put it right here with a service T so we can still service on it. I don't like doing that because it's a potential leak spot. But I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. That's what we're going to do. 
So I'll carry on with this tear out. We're gonna pull this contactor out. Oh, I'm tired today, my voice. Mega snowboarding yesterday. Oh, let me put the camera on my face. Got mega powder day yesterday. I'm so tired. You know, this getting old shit. Trying to keep up athletics with a 15 year old's brutal. Contactor out, you can see the contacts. And this one here is looking real funky. It's real basic. You got power coming in on the top. The bottom is your power for your start components to fire off your compressor. Coming in the back right here is our is our head pressure switch, safety switch. And starting from the top is condenser fan motor, condenser fan motor. Then they go one half of your crankcase heater, then the other half of your crankcase heater and your crankcase heater ground. It's that simple. It's all that's in there. All we're gonna add to it is a fan cycling switch for one condenser fan and a low pressure control to power off our contactor in series with our head pressure switch so if we get high head it's gonna drop the contactor out and when we get low pressure on a pump down it'll shut off and when the solenoid energizes and the pressure comes up it'll make it's that simple looked like a bunch of spaghetti in there but it's gonna tidy up pretty good I'm gonna use <clears throat> oh, let me get that cup of coffee going that's that's a good cup of coffee right there Hold on a second. Ah, that's pretty good. Um, I got the two pole 40 amp. That's what I always use, 240 volt coil contactor. For the low pressure switch, I'm using these. It's the Mars 43341 low pressure. Opens at five, makes it 20. And then for the fan cycling, I'm using the Mars 43306. It's going to make it 275. It'll open back up at 210. And that's how we're going to do that together. So this was on Amazon. Lifted as a craft box. Organizer. Crafts organizer. Pardon me. Fits right into the Vito bag. Vito, if you're watching, you need to get something going like this. This is what we want out in the field. Still rocking the Testo Smart Probes in there, yep. And with this bigger box, <clears throat> it gives you a wide variety of connectors and things that you'll use on the job. We can go through this in another video, but I just wanted to show you guys. I got it in there and it fits. One, two, three, four. That's 12, 12 containers that are deep for gear. Okay, bring you along for the ride. So you got the hots coming in the top. That's our compressor circuit at the bottom. We're gonna take one half of the hot straight over to one half of the coil on the contactor, okay? The other half of that coil to pull this contactor in, we're gonna start right here with half of the high pressure switch. We're gonna go out through that high pressure switch back here, and then we're gonna catch the low pressure switch, come back, and then get the other half of our contactor, the coil. It's that simple. High pressure's made, low pressure makes and breaks with the solenoid. The solenoid energizes, pressure comes up, pressure, the low pressure switch will make, break, we're on. Gets satisfied at temperature, the solenoid closes, unit pumps down, the low pressure switch opens. If our fans fail, and we get high head for some reason, and that head pressure switch, the little green ball right there, gets too high, it's normally closed switch, poop, it opens. Unit's off, okay, very simple. It was, uh, this thing was doing a good job monitoring it, and I have nothing bad to say about these. I like these units. The installer didn't put a cover on this unit, and water killed it. So that thing didn't fail. It got killed by rainwater. So, 
You guys are gonna hate me for this one. I don't have a service tee on the truck. I'm gonna have to put the fan cycle switch right off the receiver port. It's no big deal, really, because if you did have to come out and do service on it, you could backseat the valve and you could take that head pressure uh, fan cycling switch off of there. It's not a big deal. I don't have any service tees on the van. I'm all out when that's, that's embarrassing, but that's, that's how it is in the real world, right? You guys are out there, you know. But we're gonna do that. So let's carry on and I'll, I'll get you more up to speed when I get caught up here. And that's the first ones. We're gonna take those leads right to the bottom, each half of the contactor. So when that contactor pulls in, that's our lead fan. The next fan, one half is gonna come off of this side, catch half of the fan, right? We can plug that in right now, that's not a problem. The other half of the fan, we're gonna run through the fan cycling switch off of this side. So the line will come off, go through the fan cycling switch, come back to the other half of the fan. So everything's back together and already cycled to set point and shut off. I'll show you guys how I did this real quick. I just had my soap bubbles. You wanna check everything you disturb, you know, the caps. I didn't disturb that one, but we'll take a look. Um, of course, I put this here without a T. I can put the T back on when I bring the dog house. I'm gonna have a piece of sheet metal made for this. So, <clears throat> again, like I said at the beginning of the video, this is an indoor unit. We use them outdoors all the time in California, but we put a cover on them. This one didn't get a cover. As you can see, this is not liquid tight flex. But I use liquid tight on here, even though it's not a liquid tight connection at the fittings. It's just on there to protect the wires because we got line voltage going through there. Uh, the the half inch non-metallic liquid type flex will slide right over those encapsulated pressure switches see that doesn't look super pretty because i didn't cut it straight but because i used my diagonals but if you use something nice you could probably make it look real nice and straight right there and it just fits in easy so i wanted to show you guys that um if you want to check your fan cycling switch my battery's about to die on the phone get a piece of cardboard you can block off the front watch your head pressure come up Watch the cycle and then cycle off. Check your pump down. This one just pumped down. Um, I think I heard the solenoid energize right now, maybe. I thought I heard the click. We'll see here. Um, that's how you check that. So if you get one of these that fails out there and you're in a pinch, you don't have to use the encapsulated pressure switches like I used. You could use the... Uh, dual pressure control and a fan cycling switch. You know, the, the Penn Johnson ones, the gray ones. Um, I just stock these on the truck because they're inexpensive and they don't take up much room on your truck. They work fabulous. I've had not too many issues with those. And I've had issues with the, um, you know, the P70 series leaking lately. Box checking it. So yeah, we made it to set point. It has a nine degree swing on it. I didn't set it up that way, but I'm gonna leave it that way. Um, Six. Yeah, right on the money. 